Uh, yeah. This is a quite straightforward chapter. We go through the, again, the layers of the ggplot for making a plot, but we uh, stop on how to modify this layer to add things to how to make a geom uh, and then uh, add it to, to your plot. So um, sort of programming things um, at, at the uh, basic level. So basically the learning objective are programming single and multiple components, use these components and the annotation, uh, other arguments to add in a plot. And then fi finally, we have a quick look at the functional programming things uh, and what, what are the potentiality basically with an example. Actually. So, here I put this thing uh, saying uh, we are talking about components. Okay, what are the components of a plot? So we are, we we can that we can change. Uh, we we have data frames. We can make modifications to data frames. We have the aesthetics. And we can change the aesthetics, the scales as well of the the plot. And then we can change the order system and it in components. So this is something that. Uh, uh, it's just mentioned it, and we, we, we will see these things uh, uh, in, with an example. So basically, when we do single and multiple components, uh, means that we can build up uh, a plot step by step, adding components easily. And this is, uh, is a good practice when uh, we uh, build uh, plots with uh, duplicated layers which are quite similar, or oh, we want to build a series of plots uh, of the, the same kind, but we want to like have them with a, a slightly difference within each other, just to, to, to compare uh, the result. So generalizing codes allows you to more, have, have more flexibility when making customized plots. Uh, what 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 is a component in in a, in real terms? So what are we talking about? So we are talking about uh, um, a layer that we add to our plot. So to, as a first example, one component can be uh, this best fit, which is just been name and best fit, but. You can give any names, and uh, uh, it is uh, uh, this name has been assigned to uh, a geom. In this case, a geom smooth. Okay, so you assign your geom smooth. You establish your specification, your option that you think uh, would be useful for for your series of plots, that which are uh, more or less quite the same. So now you have your best fit, which is a, just a, a geom smooth that you are going to add to your plot so anytime that you make the plot you add best fit and uh, this changes a bit uh, in case you change the data or you make modification of the geom point but your best fit is stays like right? so this is one example of a component then um let's see if i um okay i went forward on these things then uh, uh, we can see we um, so we can add another we can do another way no um, and this is uh, um, for example when we uh, can add a component building up a function okay and we assign the result of this function to a geom so we specify for example we decide to call this geom lm Okay, and we use, uh, um, and this is a, a function. Okay, so we build a function, uh, and inside there's a geom smooth. Okay, so the function has its parameters, includes this uh, dot dot dot, which is not suggested to include. Uh, inside the parameters the specification of the function because can because of confusion but somehow you can use it um, and um, inside there is a geom smooth so you basically um, 
have customized your Geom's motor uh, and name it Geom LM. When you build your plot, you have your GG plot, your data, your aesthetic, your Geom points, and then you have your Geom. You have just built a Geom, Geom LM, which is a uh, Geom smooth, but it doesn't provide, for example, in this, in this case, in this specified case, uh, case, doesn't specify the standard error. Uh, it, it will use just the Madden LM as a default, of course. Then you can uh, most probably uh, modify uh, just the formula, the information. And so you have built up a geom. And this is um, um, a second uh, mentioned way to uh, customize, a comp customize a component, uh, a single component of a plot. Any questions? What is, I don't know, anything? So basically, yeah. yeah. Federica, I have a question. So in here you have function formula equals y as it relates to x um, but what are do we know some other examples you could put in for the formula it, yeah. it doesn't always have to follow the the format of y x right uh this inside the the, the function so the, this bit here are the parameters the functional parameters and obviously are the default parameters so then when you uh, use your geom, geom lm, as, as, exactly, as is done here, you can make a slight modification. Not the you cannot modify the structure of the function, but you can modify um, so, uh, the, the, the calculation in this case, so as well as the... But you could put like some x or you could put mean x or anything in that formula i assume is that right yeah you can you can you can add uh, a, a, a sum or so this is um uh, i think you can add some or you can use just uh, poly because the sum uh, let, let's go back to because, well, let, let me clarify because that that um, yeah. that structure of y and tilde x is for um, is for linear models, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. But if you're not interested in a linear model and you just you could replace that with something like sum or mean or even like concatenate i assume that's my question uh there it is okay so this is the the function huh? so we can for example uh do something like that i can make a modification here if i do fun and do this okay i can build up a function uh, i assign a name and say this is the name and then here, what, what is inside this, this bit here are the uh, specification parameters. Mm -hmm. uh, so it are the default parameters of, of the function. So uh, I think anything that you use then inside here, let's run this bit, make sure that I can... Okay, so I can run this and then this other, and this is the plot. So now you said, what if I change this to something else and again, so it's still slightly different. Like I make the sum, because you know the sum, when you do poly, you modify the word vector, so you don't have just just one number. If you do the sum, the, res the result of the, the sum function is a number, one only number. So in this case, what I'm, I can put here is something that will modify all the numbers in, yeah. in the vector. Okay, so uh, 
<laughs> Where something like x squared maybe or um yeah we we can make it maybe squared okay. square root okay does the function always have to take the format of y tilde and then then the the calculation uh let's see uh, this is is a fa failed in stack smooth to argument passive in in uh, this is maybe no. so what okay so in general when i make a geom smooth because this function uh if you if you look at the function you know these are the parameters the function is the geom smooth so basically it's just the same as uh, uh, i'm using a geom smooth yeah okay okay no i think that makes sense yeah okay thank you uh, i can make slightly modification for example if i use uh, uh, dot Oh, I don't know. I think uh, this is the uh, the function should be like that, more or less, and then you can you can add things as as the same in 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 the, in the geoms mode. Okay. Uh, let Let's go back to more complicated things uh, that we see in the following uh, part of the chapter. So we basically what what we are go, uh, doing here is understanding how we can build up our geom, okay? And so we can uh, uh, do um, uh, this way with um, uh, geom smooth. Um, in, we take a geom smooth already done and we set the, the options, the parameters, and we assign it to a name. So to understand how it works, basically, this is the, the the reason another way is to use the function okay so now what are these are one component then we we can do more than than one component okay and this is when we add two uh things inside a function for example so we do a list and we add the stat summary twice Okay, so in this case, I've put just one example of the things that uh, were in the book, but um, to understand that you can switch between the two and decide uh, and make slightly modification when you make changes inside, inside the G, this new geom mean. Okay, but basically the, this geom uh, build up the, the bars uh, at, at each level of the main, of, uh, at the level of the mean of each um, element in class, in the class vector. And then calculates the error bar. And you can see that they are all different. So they are not the same. So it, it, it's made good, fine. So you have uh, th this, um, um, this type of plot which you can use it easily with a geom uh, well settled like this. So you can just, okay. <laughs> um, let's go forward and see uh, and other more, more ways to, to use uh, an, uh, um, components, annotation and additional argument. So we have seen uh, some examples now to make a new components. And what if we want to know more about the existing components? For example, uh, we have these borders. Okay, this borders function is a function which is provided by the maps package. And it makes the border of the, the, the world no? in, in, in the map. So basically here, the books, they, they, they shows how the function is made and what, what is inside. You know, it's, it's a function that takes a database, word by the database, 
any regions and then uh, um, uh, okay these are the other specification for uh, the colors then uh, from the map data from the map data you have this database and the region and then the geom polygon basically you know that when you the, the borders option i don't know if you ever use it uh, here there's an example no? see that the borders is outside the the ggplot but you can even put it inside it's just as the same as, as the aesthetic that you can uh, uh, added outside the, the ggplot or inside so basically this is the way uh, how borders uh, uh, the borders uh, function uh, is made and it is a geom polygon uh, in fact uh, as you can see this is the result no? okay the, the borders design uh, the the uh, so the, the, the polygons of the world. And then uh, uh, in this case, we have had some points uh, for capitals, but uh, the way it's done is that it is a geom polygon inside a function, which uh, takes the elements from the database and the, and the regions. And then, uh, so some other uh, default specification, long and latitude and the, the group. So you don't need to put anything else inside because it's already done, and unless you want some modifications. So like specify the limits uh, and everything. So this is quite interesting. So basically, the, the function that you might find uh, are made like this. And uh, here is a bit of like, uh, would be interesting to do a, a little discussion about this, these two elements, these two functions, modify list and do dot call. There's a bit of confusion. So, um, I don't know if you have a user. <laughs> did you did you use it? Uh, this modify list function? No. Uh, so basically. Um, these are additional arguments uh, that we can um, use to modify the parameters because the book says uh, you, it's better if you don't use this dot 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 inside the, the function um, parameters but it's better if you use it inside the function that would be safer so in a way that you know that uh, you can use anything uh, assigned to params for example and then uh, uh, so make this uh, modification. Uh, for example, if we do this modify list, we see what is it. Modify list. This recursively uh, modify elements on a list. So uh, it's a modified version of X with modifications determined as follow. The elements in a val, in val, which are missing from X are added to X, to X. So an example, if I have uh, this list, for example, I can modify this list to with changing the elements. So going back to what we were. Uh, we can uh, use this uh, modify list to modify parameters inside the function. So we allow for the modification of the parameters. Yeah, in the bar params, there is a list 
and we allow, is that, is that correct? For the modification of the parameter for the list. Why this, this other one, uh, this other call is do call. And it has execute a function call. So basically construct and execute a function call from a name or a function and a list of arguments to be passed to it. So let's see. If we do see an example, uh, do call. Uh, that, that's not. Um, so I need to put more thoughts about that. I don't know if you have any any thoughts about this uh, this call. Um, it's not very straightforward to me to understand these things, uh, unless it's a function by. So this, what what does it? What does it do? Call something which allow modifications. No, uh, no. So basically. Uh, uh, what else? So this is what uh, we can uh, see, and we can even uh, uh, see the result of this uh, slightly modifications. You know? We have a ggplot, and this is our geom mean, where we need to just specify the color and then the list. And this is the list, basically, where we specify the arguments. list. So we, let, let's go forward and see what, what's happened here. Okay. Basically, this is interesting. Okay. So this is what is this? This is a, an example of what I did it, uh, uh, for the corporate reputation uh, uh, data from Tuesday, with 22. 22. And uh, this is, uh, there is call and the reputation data set. Okay, so the, the pool, this is to show you how to make, uh, how I make a, a geom, for example, just to summarize the things. So we have this two data sets. Okay, the first one call uh, as a company in an in industry, then the rank. Uh, so we don't need all the all the information. While the reputation as well as a company industry name and then score rank. What I did it is taking the first data set reputation, grouping by company and industry, and then summarized by score rank. Okay. Then uh, I created this because reputation is just for year 22. I created a vector with year 22. So I have this, uh, this reputation. Then I have pool, which is being slightly modified, uh, joining the reputation. So I have all the years, okay? Maybe it's clearer if we look at uh, this way. Okay, so let's go here. This is the, uh, the reputation. Okay. You see the reputation. Okay, this is the data set. Now there is a company, the name, and reputation is just for year 
2020. So what I did is here is making a, a one more one more vector with here 20. When I go to tall, yeah, then you can see that I uh, made a full join of the two data sets. So that we have all the years. So now if I have a look at the years, I have all the years. Here, I've built a, a, a plot, okay? Um, I'll call it rank plot, okay? So what I did is, is make it made a function, very simple, simple and uh, nothing special. Okay, I made a function, and inside there is a plot. Okay, so if you attempt to use this bit, this plot, it doesn't work because there is no data specification. Okay, you, you need to specify the data inside the parameters. Okay. Uh, okay, there is a lot of disturbances. Uh, I cannot do very much about that. Uh, sorry, but, uh, uh, so, so basically what happened here uh, is that I have uh, a function of date uh, that takes the data and the mapping specifications. Okay, inside the, the, the function is the plot. So the plot, the plot does uh, uh, as the data and, and the mapping. Then we have a geom call, a geom text, and all these things. Okay. So now, I think uh, I select just the, the year 2007 and, the, and one industry, just to, to, to visualize one industry in 2017. And uh, I ap apply the function, okay? So, to do that, what I do is to rank plot. This is the, the function now. Okay. So inside, I need to put all the things to specify. This is one way. Then the end of the chapter says that instead you can find a turnaround instead of specifying all these things. If I do that, I have the plot, you know, which is made of ranks of uh, the retail industry in 2007. And uh, so basically, the structure is just this. You run the plot function, uh, establish the things that you are going to uh, call from the, that you miss it, basically, the, the, the data that, that will change. And all the, the main part of the function is, is a plot. It's a plot in itself, but it doesn't work. So if I use just these things, eh, the plot doesn't work. So it misses the information, the important information. So when I use the rank plot function, I need to specify the information that I require in the function. I need to specify the data and the mapping. Okay. So this is, uh, uh, I don't know, beside the fact that uh, this is the team part. Uh, of the of the plot, 
uh, it's a geom call and a geom text, basically. And then accordingly, so it's turned around. Basically, I put the text as the rank, and this is the key. Here are some references, but I'd like to show you one more thing, so that we have uh, uh, done, basically, uh, which is here. So I've shown you, I've showed, showed you my my blog, but in the in the book they they talk about a pie chart. So basically, you do a pie chart this way. You do a function, and which inside contains a pie chart. You know, it's a geom bar with a chord polar, and you obtain a pie chart. Then you can call the pie chart with the specification that you have uh, requested uh, in the parameters uh, of the function inside of the function. What, what happened here is that you can, so, so the book concludes with the fact that you can even uh, using uh, some turnaround to avoid uh, making too much specification in the function, just to use the function as, as is, okay, while the specification you use it inside when you are building the function, okay, so that, that's there's few different options. So you can use like the tilde. Uh, uh, you can use even in the field, like the bar for specifying that you are talking about a variable, the variable. So you can modify the things this way instead of just using the simple aesthetic. So this is the so the the the, the, the most the, the main lines of the the chapter and um, finally so uh, this is um, it says that uh, so you can add a different geom to the same base plot and as well as you can use some other function, mapping functions to the geom. Okay, so that you can display three plots in one. And this is uh, the last bit of the. Uh, there are some uh, nice resources to look at, and they are suggested, uh, like extending ggplot, the functions. Uh, all from the advanced R book. Okay. So <laughs> the, the, the chapter is, uh, is this. Nothing else. Now, I'm sorry about the confusion, but you know, there's lots of people. <laughs> Okay. It seems like um, it, it, this is this, to me. This is a really good discussion because um, I hadn't seen it in depth this month. I hadn't really been exposed to the idea of programming um, in ggplot, and I just know that it's going to be the kind of thing that takes a lot of practice, but at least being exposed to it and seeing that there are ways to do it, I think is really, really good and really helpful. Have you got any other comments? Maybe Ryan, Jackson, I don't know. You want to go to the uh, about your experience?
Otherwise, we can. Uh, I, I, I like making these plots. For example, I did once um, a combo plot, and this is because how I needed to, to make two plots. So I made, I made it together, and then uh, uh, with a combo function, I call it just combo. It's quite simple. You know, it seems like easy to do the, this, uh, but uh, when you want to do it, specify uh, to something that you um, exactly in the way that you want it, basically. If you have some spe specific requirements, uh, that might be challenging somehow. Federica, you said you have you have some examples of this in your GitHub of where you. you... Uh, yeah, uh, there's uh, more examples uh, in the, of these things. Um, yeah. Was um, <laughs> was uh, looking at different things uh, and um, I I think more more information can be found on, on this uh, advanced R book uh, where is the there is a let's say expanded explanation of the function language and how to use it because um it's making a function itself uh, with uh, that somehow can be a challenge uh, but it's simple you know it's simple but it's a, it's a challenge i don't know Maybe it's just me. Um, for me, it's everything uh, for this chapter. So uh, I think we we see uh, if next week uh, uh, we we can do chapter twenty one, maybe. Uh, which is uh, the last uh, the which is the last chapter because then there is just one case study left. So okay. Okay. we're almost to the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I had a, a separate question then I, that I wanted to ask the group about if we have just a second. Um, I I had come across. Plotly, the package for Plotly, uh, but I didn't entirely understand where it fit in into the ecosystem here, other than it sounds like Plotly, uh, for one, it offers interactive, uh, interactive plots, which ggplot does not really offer interactive plots, if I'm not mistaken, um, but then Plotly also integrates with R, integrates with Python, I think MATLAB. So am I understanding it correctly that it's all, it's a it's a visualization package and a visualization library that R can access to make plots interactive? Is that the idea if anybody's used Plotly? Yeah, so I I have used it, uh, but it was a while ago. But you're right. So um, it, it basically, you know, the the additional strength that it brings is that it makes it uh, makes your ggplot2 code uh, more interactive. And I think um, I tend to use it along with the ggplot code. You sort of add the uh, plotly. Um, how do I say that? So you you basically write your same ggplot two layers and bring in the plotly components to it. So which basically makes your ggplot two static code, uh, you know, graph to 
uh, it allows that to be displayed as something that if you hover over it, you know, it will show the values or you could zoom in and zoom out of that particular piece. So, yeah. Uh, and uh, let me quickly Google of what I'm, I was thinking because um, I've used it, but it was a while ago. So uh, I, I had used it within, uh, I think within one of the shiny apps that I was building. Yeah. And uh, there was just a um, few limitations to, you know, what you can make in ggplot2 versus what you can make in plotly. But that was like maybe some extreme cases. Um, but I guess uh, Frederica is showing something, some, some more stuff. So does Plotly, Plotly has like some default interactivity built in? Is that the idea? And so, you, you know, you mentioned that you can hover and see values, you can zoom in and zoom out, but mm -hmm. are you able to change the values that you can see when you hover? Like maybe you don't want to see a, a count of records and you want to see a sum or something like that is that um, probably yeah let me do a quick search and see if I'm right I think you you definitely can let me double check I guess this is you. like uh if you use a function plotly to some data and then, for example, this is a scattered plot and allows you to select uh, the element. But if you don't want to see an element, you don't need to plot it. So you need to filter it out first. Or I don't know if there's any other, maybe there's uh, some uh, uh, other, because you don't want that to be clicked and so you don't want to see the number appearing. Maybe there is a way to uh, to do that for sure. But as you can see, it's, it's a function that it's a, it's a wrapper of uh, ggplot, so you can use, it's a, like the plot function that does everything automatically, but this is um, interactive plot. But so far, as you can see, that you can make lots of, uh, lots of plots, different plots, it, it's nice. It's nice somehow if you want to have an interactive thing. And and Plotly automatically knows how to how to make any ggplot interactive. I mean, I know you said there's extreme cases where where it can't, but generally you can turn any ggplot that you make, you can make it interactive using Plotly. Is that true? Okay. So somehow Plotly can interpret bars, it can interpret lines, it interprets points and assigns values to, to that, okay. And so then is, would you suggest uh, developing plots in ggplot and then, and then uh, incorporating Plotly or just design directly in Plotly? That, that's a good question. Uh, let's let's see what's what's uh, what's. Yeah. So I just sent this link. Um, so basically, you you down, install the Plotly library and define your ggplot object and use a ggplotly function on that ggplot object to display, you know, to, to convert your ggplot into an interactive one. Okay. And so that's the magic of Plotly is that it can interpret the ggplot and identify how to make it interactive. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like like ray shaders, when you make an animation that you do the plot and then you put inside a, a function that will animate. In this case, you like make it interactive. 
Okay. I'm going to work on that. Thank you. Um, okay. Thanks, everyone. See you next. Thank you so much, everyone. Yeah. And, um, so we'll see if June is back. Hopefully, she'll be back next week. If not, we can take up the next chapter. Uh, if anybody wants to pick up, I'm happy to uh, let you discuss. All right. Yeah, we'll meet next week and uh, we're about to finish this. Yeah. <laughs> Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.